Vanity Fair, a novel without a hero, by William Makepeace Thackeray. While our century was in its teens, and on one sunshiny morning in June, there drove up to the great iron gate of Miss Pinkerton's Academy for Young Ladies on Chiswick Mall a large family coach with two fat horses and driven by a fat coachman in a three-cornered hat and wig. It's Mrs. Sedley's coach, sister, said Miss Jemima Pinkerton. Have you completed all the necessary preparations incident to Miss Sedley's departure, Miss Jemima? asked Miss Pinkerton herself. That majestic lady, the Semiramis of Hammersmith, the friend of Dr. Johnson. The girls were up at four this morning packing her trunk, sister. And I trust, Miss Jemima, you have made a copy of Miss Sedley's account. This is it, is it? Very good. Ninety-three pounds, four shillings. Be kind enough to address it to Mr. John Sedley, Esquire, Russell Square, and to seal this B.A. which I have written to his lady. Miss Pinkerton's B.A. was to the following effect. Madam, after her six years' residence at the Mile, I have the honour and happiness of presenting Miss Amelia Sedley to her parents as a young lady not unworthy to occupy a fitting position in their polished and refined circle. Those virtues which characterise the young English gentlewoman, those accomplishments which become her birth and station, will not be found wanting in Miss Sedley, whose industry and obedience has endeared her to her instructors, and whose delightful sweetness of temper has charmed her aged and her youthful companions. In leaving the mile, Miss Amelia carries with her the hearts of her companions, and the affectionate regard of her mistress, who has the honour to subscribe herself. Madam, your most obliged, humble servant, Barbara Pinkerton. A P.S. Miss Sharp accompanies Miss Sedley. It is particularly requested that Miss Sharp's stay in Russell Square may not exceed ten days. The family of distinction with whom she is engaged as a governess desire to avail themselves of her services as soon as possible. This letter completed, Miss Pinkerton proceeded to write her own name and that of Miss Sedley in the flyleaf of a Johnson's Dictionary, the interesting work which she invariably presented to her scholars on their departure from the mile. Being commanded by her elder sister to get the dictionary from the cupboard, Miss Jemima had extracted two copies of the book. When Miss Pinkerton had finished her inscription in the first, Miss Jemima, with a rather timid and dubious air, handed her the second. "'For whom is this, Miss Jemima?' said Miss Pinkerton, with awful coldness. "'For Becky Sharp,' answered Jemima, trembling very much. "'She's going, too.' "'Miss Jemima!' exclaimed her sister. Ah, you in your senses replace the dictionary in the closet and never venture to take such a liberty in future. Now, send Miss Sedley instantly to me. And so, venturing to say not another word, poor Jemima trotted off, exceedingly flooded and nervous. Miss Sedley's papa was a merchant in London and a man of some wealth, whereas Miss Sharp was an articled pupil, an orphan, for whom Miss Pinkerton had done, as she thought, quite enough without conferring upon her parting the high honour of the dictionary. As we are to see a great deal of Amelia, there is no harm in saying, at the outset of her acquaintance, that she was a dear little creature. As she is not a heroine, there is no need to describe her person, indeed. I am afraid that her nose was rather short than otherwise, and her cheeks a great deal too round and red for a heroine. But her face blushed with rosy health, and her lips with the freshest of smiles, and she had a pair of eyes that sparkled with the brightest and honestest good humour, except, indeed, when they filled with tears, and that was a great deal too often. Well, then, the presents and the trunks and bonnet-boxes of Miss Sedley having been arranged in the carriage, together with a very small and weather-beaten old cowskin trunk with Miss Sharp's card neatly nailed upon it, the hour for parting came. Miss Pinkerton addressed her pupil. A seed cake and a bottle of wine were produced in the drawing room, as on the solemn occasions of the visits of parents, 
and these refreshments being partaken of, Miss Sedley was at liberty to depart. "'You'll go in and say good-bye to Miss Pinkerton, Becky,' said Miss Jemima to a young lady, of whom nobody took any notice, and who was coming downstairs with her own handbox. "'I suppose I must,' said Miss Sharp calmly, and advanced in a very unconcerned manner, and said in French to Miss Pinkerton with a perfect accent, "'Mademoiselle, je vais vous faire mes adieux.'